welcome to Volleyball DNA, where we examine the characteristics that make up some of the most intriguing personalities in the world of volleyball. I'm Denise Lazaro. And I'm Anton Rojas. The subject for this episode is one perfect example of the saying, big things come in small packages. Young, talented, strong, and beautiful are just some of the many adjectives that we can use to describe our guest for today. Two-time UAAP champion and setter for the DLSU Lady Spikers, Michelle Cobb. Hello, old friend. Hey. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. I'm pretty kakaligo ko la. Friend, do sa pa yung hair. It seems like you're in a good mood despite all the news that's been going on about the UAAP. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Grabe. As in, hindi ko inexpect yun. As in, the group chat, grabil hat sila parang. So yeah, it was really shocking. I can't even imagine. Yeah. It's great it's crazy Michelle, no? Like how a couple of days ago they were talking about how um the UAP is going to have a bubble and then they're going yeah. they're only going to have two sports, basketball, basketball and volleyball. Yeah. And then now, you know, this. No, and they even parang um they released the uh, parang tiebreaker times ba yun? With me and Aljun's picture, I've tapos, seen that picture several tapos times. Tapos that, yeah, that article got so much hate. I was, tapos me and Aljun were like, "We got back because the picture." Para <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hate, hate for what? Like the first time? No, um, the but the recent one. Ah, the one that says cancelled na. No, two, ah, two okay. leads lang. Ay, two oh, leads. Yun. Two events lang. Yeah, yun, yun, yun. Tapos yun. yung mga parang tennis, ganyan. Parang hmm. my friends din, like from other, ano, parang they were so, ano, mad. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah cause they used your photos twice for mm. that, yung two events. And then for the, ano, again, the cancellation. Yun pa rin yeah, yung, yeah, yeah. yun pa rin yung ginamit. Hindi, pero kasi naman, Michelle, lasa lang host eh, di ba? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Lasa lang host. That's why they put you guys there. Well, for sure, the people wow. go. <laughs> the people yeah, go. they're not they're not aware. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> How did you find out through the group chat or the article? Yeah. No, through the group chat lang. Parang they said wow. a screenshot. Tapos, <laughs> wow. Tapos, wow. yeah, everyone, we were all talking lang last night. Wow. Like, when the pandemic ever. But you guys were, of course, you were, syempre, nagko-conditioning kayo at home, online yeah. practice, kasabay pa ng school. Yeah, every day. Wow. So yeah, medyo ma-disrupt ulit yung... Actually, yeah, I don't really know what their plan is gonna be pa. So. Well, at least, Michelle, for the meantime, we can use this time to relive... You know your entire UAP career. I was telling then then that if there's one person whose story I really enjoyed covering, it was your story because I mean, well, everybody's gonna find out now. So for for the first question, Michelle, I mean your last name is very foreign, but you of course are proudly Filipina. Could you tell us the origin of the Cobb family name? Um, so the Cobbs are actually of American descent. Pero me kasi, I was born, I was born and raised here. And my dad looks Filipino. Pero mm. I guess yung mga ancestors namin, and like, my, lolo, my grandfather is, um, so that makes him like half, half American, half Filipino. Mm. So, ayun. Medyo malayo na rin ako eh. Pero I guess parang since na carry on lang pero yun malayo na din ako pero yeah the cobs are of american descent but where were you born here in the philippines um mandaluyong i was born in mandaluyong ah mandaluyong okay so okay. talagang filipina okay 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 huh? you have a province yeah my mom's from bacolod so ah, I, okay. i always go there then if i growing up like summer ganyan i'm always in bacolod so when you were younger, uh, your original sport was swimming. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And you're pretty, like, not tan. <laughs> I was before. I was before. Talaga. You, no. <laughs> you can't imagine. You probably, like, tan really well. <laughs> I was really sunog. I mean, given kasi naman, pag swimmer ka, diba, sunog ka talaga. 
Yeah. Pero since now, I'm like all grown up. I can't really imagine that I was. <laughs> How did how did you get into swimming? Um, cause my dad a swimmer. Um, my dad was actually mm. part of the water polo team. He played for Lasal also. Oh, so, okay. um, yeah. So yun parang I guess naging na push kami. Meron kasi nag push sa amin eh, which was my dad. So, ayun parang me and my sister we got really into it. Um, and I guess parang looking at it now, parang it's nice kasi. Like my dad would always say, parang you never know when you're gonna need it. Eh. Like swimming in general, like kunyari, like emergency wise, it's really nice that you get to know how to swim because you know you never know when you're gonna need it. All right, and then I remember you telling me, Michelle, that it was in grade five when you shifted from swimming to volleyball. What was the story behind this change? Um. So grade five, I. Well, actually, it was nothing. I mean, looking back at it now, it yeah. was. I I guess it was just fate running its um you know its thing, and yung time lang yun, it was just um intramurals, you know, like great time intramurals, and parang that time then I wasn't um I on I only swam during the summertime, kasi parang I guess parang club team siya, parang summer club lang siya. In a way, so parang I guess I wanted to do something parang permanently. So yun I tried out for the grade school volleyball team after the interims, and that's where it started for me. And this is at Saint Sco. Yeah. Oh okay. Saint Sco Manila. We're having homegrown talents at Saint Sco, like mm. Si Hervasho, yes, Mika Reyes, oh, yes. Yeah. you. Wait. When you were playing volleyball in Saints, did you ever imagine yourself playing in the UAAP one day? Of course. Um, I guess everyone naman. Like high school, oh. di ba parang dream talaga yung um, maglaro for UAAP. And for me, kasi parang naging dream ko talaga yun. And I remember vividly na parang I would always think or like it would always cross my mind na I really want to get in the UAAP. So... Yeah, um, I guess it was really my dream, my high school dream to get in the UAP. Okay, I just want to check, huh, just to make sure. What was your position in high school? Um, high school, kasi meron siyang ano eh. Iko ate din, di ba meron like four two ganon? Alam mo ba yun? Wala sa min wala. Basa yung ganon. Parang kasi di ba parang high school it's medyo informal pa. Yeah. So parang I was a hitter and I was a setter then. So. Yung yung height ko pwede ba? <laughs> yung height natin. Pwede ah, height natin. <laughs> Oo. Eh bakit bakit naman hindi si Den middle blocker nung high school? Oh. Ayan nga. Yeah, so, 'di ba parang pag high school kasi parang you can do anything pa eh para uh, yeah. Hindi pa masyado strict. Okay. Kaya pa lang height namin kasi medyo mababa pa yung net. Oh, mababa pa yung net. Okay, um, this is the part of your story that, that shocked me when I first heard it. Uh, you told me you weren't recruited by yeah. LaSalle. Yeah. And, and now I found out, I just found out that your, your dad is from LaSalle pala. So, so there's, there's a LaSallean connection. Were there other schools recruiting you? And if so, or if not, how did you end up in LaSalle? Um, no, I wasn't parang... What do they call that? Yung parang super highly... Like blue chip recruit? I don't know what that means. Pero like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> parang I wasn't like that eh. Parang I was on the down low, I guess. And then, so, um, hindi ako, I mean, hindi ako na-recruit ng ibang schools. And with La Salle, then I just tried out this. Eh. So, um, yeah, I guess parang, yun, parang, I guess... My whole story, then in general, I guess it's just fate working its thing or doing its thing. So yeah. when you re- when you tried out for La Salle, do you just like walk in, or is there like a process <laughs> to get in? Because we all know that you know, and daming gusto ng makapasok sa La Salle. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's I think it's just two ways. Eh. Either you get recruited or you pass the tryouts. Mm-hmm. So. For me, yeah, I just because the body post sa Twitter before they posted parang yeah. meron pa ang height requirement, oh, de ba? <laughs> so ayon. Sabi <laughs> ko balak ay. <laughs> uh, 
So, <laughs> ayun. Um, I remember it was, ano pa eh, after our graduation ball, high school graduation ball. And, yun. I remember going pa to Razon and like, there's a lot of, syempre, kasi, ano ba yun? Ay, hindi. Uh, that was before season 78. Uh, okay. So, ang dami, as in, ang daming girls. And, I guess, I, I, ano naman, I was able to, it was nice naman for me. I mean, the tryout experience. Kasi, di ba, with, with a lot of people, kunyari, there's a lot of girls trying out, minsan hindi napapansin lahat. And my tryout experience naman, it was okay. I was able to, you know, parang, um, immerse myself talaga. And, yun, it was nice naman. <laughs> Okay. Um. Th- th- this is this is because I remember the first time you told me this story was right before a game. I was writing down the whole story at the back yeah, of my this. script. You, you you know what? I lost that script. <laughs> I I, it's, I, I, I you were able to recall. No. So ano eh, Um. Yeah. Because I like the story, and you tell you told it well. Plus, that was the game na naka three straight service aces yeah, ka. Yeah. So, sakto yung pagkuha ako ng story sa'yo. Like, nakwento ko during that game. Yeah, any, yeah. Any, anyway, what I remember from your story to me was that um, you were at the sports complex. And by coincidence, the lady spikers were jogging. Mm. Okay, they were jogging. And then one of them calls you and, and saying something like, Uy, mag-try out ka. Uy, balik ka sa team. Ganyan. Like, was was that how it happened? Um, not quite. Actually, um, because it wasn't. Parang it was actually at the Carol. Ah, who went inside the room. Who went inside the PE room. Pero she didn't say na parang we try out ka. It was actually a word from the coaches. Parang she was just re- relaying the information. Parang um, yun she randomly went in her PE classroom and then parang she was like saying she was saying parang uy, tawag ka ni coach, ganyan, sabi ko, eh, ako naman, parang, <laughs> tapos parang, yung time na yun, sobrang sensitive topic pa siya sa akin, kasi syempre, I didn't get in the first time, I mean, the first tryout. So, it was, parang yun nga, parang I was caught off guard, I was like, what? Ganun. And then, so, I, yun, I went out of the classroom, and then, the coaches were there, and, kasi, our uh, coach Noel, if you're familiar with coach yeah, Noel, coach assistant Noel. coach, I think kasi, looking back at it, he was the one parang, who got familiar with my face mm-hmm. during the first tryout. Because I remember Coach Ramil wasn't in the first tryout. Eh. Mm-hmm. So when they saw me walking dun sa, sa um, complex, parang, nakita ko na dun siya na parang he was talking to Coach Ramil when he saw me. So parang dun ko dun na, ano na ayun, parang he got familiar with me. Kasi I remember parang he got familiar with me during the first tryout. So, Ayun, the, when I went up to them, parang they said na parang if I'm open to training, you know. And I was like, okay, ganun. Like, and after that, I told my mom and even my high school coach, Coach Ofi, um, she was really like, you know, game, game na talaga. And that's where it started for me. Yeah, and that's not an easy commitment to be a yeah. late biker. Yeah. <laughs> but and, studies and that. Yeah, and that time then, parang I didn't really know, or I I wasn't aware of like the volume or like the pressure na it. So parang na ano talaga? Well, okay lang naman, kasi parang I grabbed it eh. and yung opportunity na yun na nagab ko. Sure, that may follow through. So na follow through ko na <laughs> kahit pa paano. You're here now, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> well, during yeah. that time, Kim Pardo was the main setter of the yeah. team. How was it like playing as the backup setter to her? And what was the most important thing that you learned from her? Um, I learned a lot. Pero kasi, like, I guess skill-wise kasi, we play, we play, ano, eh, differently. Like, that's what coach would always say. Parang iba kasi yung styles namin ni Kim. Pero, like, role-wise, madami talaga ako natutunan. Like, I can't just, like, say one kasi madami talaga. Like, in terms of, siguro, um, I'll say na lang in terms of like composure, ganyan. Ate Kim, grabe, suabe, ganyan. And ako talaga, I, I had the hard time with that. Parang yung composure. Kasi that's like what you need eh. That's what you need as a setter. And I guess yung ano din, um, leadership ni Ate Kim, hindi siya, what's this? Hindi siya vocal. Pero like, 
you know she's a leader kasi once she's in the room or once she's like on the court parang you know she's the leader like without even say anything so i guess yun and i um one thing then is parang yung pag care niya sa teammates niya and especially for me kasi um i remember starting i remember before um the game na i started season 80 before the first game the usd game um she she texted me like super long message ganyan wow. and i really appreciated it I, actually season 81 din basta yung first game ng season parang she would always talk to me ganyan and sobrang na appreciate ko yun kasi parang alam mo yun parang we have that like relationship na she she can relate to like the the role and the pressure actually iba yung pressure yung sa akin pero guess <laughs> yung parang ano yung yung ganun ganung relationship na mentor and like you know sister and everything you know so yeah it, it means a lot when your peers especially the ones who came before you yeah have your back And and yeah. they go out of their way to give you words of encouragement, try to motivate you, and just let yeah. you know that you'll be fine. But um, you yung kwento mo about uh, Coach Noel or Kulio like, like yeah. struck me because like imagine if hindi ka napansin ni Coach yeah, Noel, right? de ba? Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's the importance of having a coaching staff because mm-hmm. like it, it's hard, siguro for the head coach and daming iniisip to to see everything. Mm, yeah. But uh, like historically, ang lasal kasi yan si Kim Fajardo, matangkad. Um, Mika Esperanza was also pretty tall. Yeah. You stand at five four. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> But you earned Coach Ramil's trust. You earned yeah. his trust. Like, how did you do it? Um, <laughs> honestly, I. I thought it was by chance lang talaga. Yeah. And like what I said, parang I saw an open door. I saw an opportunity. And I grabbed it. And alam mo yun, parang I was just going for it talaga. And kasi for me din, parang I could see din parang if someone sees something in me. And I saw that na parang he sees something in me or like he gave me parang this? he gave me like a space He give me um, parang vibes na parang he he sees potential in me. So parang yun hindi ko naman din kasi pagpipilitan yung sarili ko sa sorry. Hindi ko din naman kasi pagpipilitan yung sarili ko sa kung hindi na, kung sa tingin ko na wala akong chance. So parang yun, I saw I saw an open door. I saw there was a chance. So um, I went for it and yun. Well, sabi mo nga earlier na malaking bagay as a setter to have coach yeah. on the court. Yeah. You're like the floor general. Kumbaga. And during your second year, you were handed the role as the primary setter of the team. Mm-hmm. So that's like being a leader in itself na as, you know, yeah. primary setter. How did you manage to do your job? You know, as being second year pa lang, malaking role na yung binigay sa'yo ni Coach Ramil. Mm. I guess it was parang for me kasi I saw it as parang input output and kasi me as a player um kasi if you're to look at parang hard work and talent the I'm more of a hard worker and dun talaga ako nagbabank like I bank on that and yun nga nag-input ako ng hard work and parang mas nag mas since you know I I work hard for it mas na engaño ako mag output ng, you know, something rewarding. So, um, and I guess, syempre, hindi din talaga maano yung support from my family and my teammates and the coach syempre, parang pukpuk kasi ako eh, pinukpuk ako eh. I mean, sinagad ako to my limit, which is good for me. Kahit na it was hard, it was good for me kasi yun nga, I was able to go out of like my shell and like be able to really like they they got the best they got out the best in me so i guess yun lang um being coachable ren it's it's really um top na you have to be coachable lalo na for me kasi hindi like no high school parang hindi pa masyado ganun ka high level yung nilalaro ko compared to yung high school standouts so i really had to work hard 
and to you know meet the standard. You know what? Um, I'll, I'll never forget this because sometimes when I watch volleyball games, I watch it from the side, like like at the back of the the where the commentators sit and at the yeah. back of like the bench. So I see what happens at the net, and sometimes I watch you block. And yeah. when you block, your fundamentals are really good. Like you really bend really low because you you have the power up. Eh, para para yung level mo ng katabi mo na middle blocker. You're at the same. Yeah. And and you're always at the same height when you jump. Mm-hmm. So so that now that you're explaining it, that you had to work extra hard. I yeah. see. I see the the results on the court. But I want to go back to that yung yung kwento ko kanina na I I got your story before that game, your breakout game because I think that game was when everybody noticed you talaga. Eh. That was February 23, 2018, season 80, second game of the season. It was Lasal versus UP. You had already four service aces in that match and you were back at the service line and you hit three service aces to win. Like, do you remember that moment? Like, Phil Oil was packed. People were screaming. And like, they were going wild nung sunod-sunod yung aces. And then, I think, I think Tiam Zon carried you or something like that yeah. after, after the game. Like, what, were, what do you remember from that moment? You know, looking back, parang ang tagal-tagal na nun. Parang ang, ang dami nangyari ngayon na. Parang two years yung 2020. <laughs> So I well I guess looking back um actually ito lang yung kasi sobrang daming nangyari nung time na yun and hindi ko siya ma-recall kung ano ba talaga yung like what was going in my mind like what I remember lang is um I didn't know na I, I wasn't talking at the score that time eh. so I didn't know na it was that close so I guess yun lang yung na remember ko vividly na I didn't bother looking at the score so I didn't know na 24 or basta something like that na yun. So, so parang yun, when I did the first ace, parang, um, I remember na parang, I didn't know na it was that big of a deal. Because <laughs> like, the score was ganun na pala. So, hindi ko siya na, na ano. Tapos, ayun, I guess parang adrenaline and everything, parang wala. It, wala, yun. Parang na-carry, na-carry away lang ako in terms ng adrenaline, ganyan. And, Ayun, natapos na pala. <laughs> oh, di ba? Hindi ko alam. Three, three straight yun eh. But like, did, did, yeah. you, fe- did you feel like um, maybe, like I guess if, if you're a student and then you talk about the volleyball game, damn, mm. nakita nyo ba si Cobb? Naka, ano, naka, yeah. three, naka three straight service. Did you feel like that changed when you went back to school or something? Um. Well... What do you mean it changed? Like, 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 do you, like I don't, I don't know, like how it is for like athletes when you when you play oh, like, a good game and then you go back to school, like people like saying hi to you and stuff. Um, not exactly. I guess yung night na yon, like I had ah. a lot of like of my friends, parang calling me kaya solid yun. Oh, solid. So yun. Okay naman. Pero nothing changed, like. Um, I guess parang kasi every game, refresh yan eh, every game. Mm. Parang it's not like you're on cloud nine, like, till the next day. Parang you have to get over it. I mean, not get over it, but like, you have to like, move on. Mm. Parang, and start naman preparing for the next game. Yun. It's what's expected of you for four well. And it's yeah. what you do back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Muscle memory. And that's yeah. why you don't like, look at the score. That's how focused you are. Yeah. With playing. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your championships. Mm. It's always sweet to win your first championship in the UAAP. But did it feel? How did it feel for you to win your second UAAP title and to do it as the main setter of the team? It was really memorable. I guess UAAP, my UAAP experience so far, is super memorable. Ang daming like memorable experiences, and I guess that um, the three P tops it. Um, and sobrang parang that time it was really a weight off my chest na parang I was able to breathe I was able to you know parang I did that you know parang um and I guess kasi syempre parang as a UAP player you have to make a name for yourself eh. and yung time na yun siguro parang dun ko 
parang na set yung ground ko na this is me parang this is what I can do parang syempre without um acknowledgement of like my teammates syempre my ates and the coaches and my family so yeah hmm. and I can only imagine like siguro you know you're taking over from Kim Fajardo and then you have all these parts at your disposal you have to make them look good that can't be an easy job yeah <laughs> <laughs> Grabe talaga yun. Looking <laughs> back at it now. Grabe. Nagawa ko yun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Your third season though, all these parts that you had are suddenly gone. So yeah. like another tough job. I mean, all of a sudden, no no, no more Majoy to toss to, no more Kiana, no more Dawn to have your back. So yeah. like, I guess your third year must have been so challenging what, what was it mm-hmm. like you know having to adjust and now step up as one of the leaders of the team it was really like um it really tested me as a person mm-hmm. um and ayun nga parang ano siguro eh um yun nga parang in, nawalan ng key players so we really had to um build again so hindi siya hindi siya yung compared sa ibang seasons na parang isa lang nawawala or ganun. This one talaga parang half of the the starting six. So, <laughs> ayun. Um, I guess yun nga, parang marami din, marami din naging lapses. Like, ko, ano, if you were to look at the result din naman, parang marami din kami naging lapses. And I guess, okay lang din kasi we really learned, I learned a lot and my teammates learned a lot from it. And ayun, So yeah, I guess it's it's um it's part of the learning journey then for me for me. Okay, but if you could go back to that season and do things differently to have a more positive outcome, is there anything you think you guys could have done better? Um I guess the foundation, foundation wise, I guess okay. we we could have done better in terms of parang making the team more solid. I guess yun, parang, yeah, we could have been more solid. Describe naman an off-season with the Lady Spikers after not winning or no. you know, reaching the finals. <laughs> As expected. I mean, you guys are <laughs> lahat. Yeah. How challenging is it? <laughs> um, I guess, ano, very talaga, very. <laughs> Pero parang, what's nice about the past That was last year, diba? Yeah. What's nice about last year's off-season was um, we were all, parang kumbaga, we were all in the same boat. Parang walang kumaliwa sa kabilang boat. Parang ganun. Parang we were all looking and heading towards the same direction. Which was nice. Kasi kahit na kahit na pudpud kami, kahit na kayod talaga kami everyday, parang we were all in sync eh. Kasi we we Um, parang in a, in a way, parang we we all know what we want and we want to make it happen. Eh. So I guess okay lang din mahirapan kami ganyan. Iyak na lang ganyan. Pero iyak na lang kami sabay. Karami ka na ba? So ayun, it's nice then refreshing really to be able to last year, ah, last off season, kasi mm. parang very. I guess yun nga yung naging issue ko na hindi kami solid. I guess I would say no off season na yon mas naging solid kami kasi nga syempre we go through hard times eh, and we go through it together and I guess that's what makes it solid. Kaya namin na tanong yon kasi I mean coach Ramil is very strict and like there are, there are famous practices of Lasal na after the match they diretso kayo sa TAF tapos magpa-practice mm. ulit. Kaya naisip yeah. namin like Paano kaya pag matalo sa championship? Because, I mean, we're talking about 10 straight years in, in the finals here. Di ba? Yeah. So, it, it's super unusual. But, like, now now that you've you've explained that, yun nga, I can feel, like, the solidarity with the team. Mm-hmm. So, you do, you go through that off-season. Season 82, you only played one match. And at least we got to see the potential of the Lady Spikers. I mean, you you had a lot of exciting young rookies like how how confident did you feel about that season uh, Michelle and do you guys think that you could have won the championship with that group that you had a very young and talented group um i guess i wouldn't say naman na 
pag natuloy yun, parang champion na kami. Pero like, me personally, and like the other seniors din would agree na the team really had great potential. As in, kahit na yun nga, off-season, parang, ano eh, positive kami lahat eh. Kasi like, me then with the other seniors, like sila din, parang we would, we would know if there's something off. Like, we would know if there's doubt. Kahit na we're not talking, parang, alam mo yun, yung vibes na parang if may doubt sa team, alam, malalaman mo. Pero yung team na yun, alam, um, very confident ako, and I'm sure sila din, lahat kami, very confident going into season 82. Kaya sobrang bummer lang na hindi siya natuloy. Pero, from what I see talaga, or like my vision dati, going into the season, parang it was a team na who was ready to learn and who was ready to experience in the highs and lows of the UAP. Kasi syempre, like, okay, given na we won against Ateneo, but like, it's it's not, it's not, it doesn't end there. Eh. Parang the UAP is such, you know, you get to you get to see yourself in the highest and in your lowest. So, parang, you have to really work hard for it. And yung team na yun, it was willing, I mean, for me, ha, it was really willing to go through the highs and lows together and hopefully mag-end sa high. So, yun. You shared na that team off-season or, mm-hmm. or going into season 82, you were solid and there was no doubt within the team that you were gonna go to the finals again. Yeah. Or you were gonna go far. Um, Share with us yung feeling na for suddenly na cancel yung season 82. Um baka mapagura ako dito. Pero alam mo yun like kasi di ba nung first tanga first first game pa na na ano yan na postpone eh. Mm. So ang hirap kaya mag mindset. Like ang hirap nung Ang hirap nung, okay, sige, two weeks na naman ulit. Okay, magkakonditioning na naman kami ng two weeks para in preparation for... Nakakainip. <laughs> really? Ba't, ba't ganun? Ano? <laughs> Madali ang conditioning. Hindi nga. So, <laughs> ayun, para yung, sobrang... Yung gusto mo yung pag-UAAP, sunod-sunod yung games nyo para yung training medyo... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Parang Sunday, tapos Wednesday ulit. <laughs> <laughs> so ayun, very alam mo yung parang ano bang trip nito? Ano bang <laughs> pinaglolo ko ba kami dito? <laughs> Pero syempre, safety first. So uh, yeah. Uh, Michelle question, who was your backup setter during during season 82? Um I had two. Two? Si, oh, two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, si Julia didn't get to play. Eh. Julia, okay. Coronel, and Marion. Marion got to play. Oh yeah, si Marion Alba pala. Okay. Alba okay. reminds me of Kim. Yes. Actually, yun nga. Yun yung parang, parang naging, ano, me and Mario, parang, um, it's nice kasi we have different styles. So, we bring different um, types of play sa, sa laro. Yun. And Julia is very promising. She's a... Yes, very. from CSA. So yes. Know. Oh, yeah. You're from CSA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Julia is from CSA. Grabe, grabe. I'm so excited then for the both of them. Promising players. Okay, Michelle, I want to ask you about... Um, I was lucky enough to catch this on my phone, actually. Because um, I randomly take videos when I watch games. There was this one move that you did during that Ateneo LaSalle game. It was a sliding back set. As in, you were on your oh, yeah. knees and you were sliding. And then you set mo pa to... I think it was Cruz? Was it, was it Cruz? Um, it was Jean Sorenio. Oh, Sorenio. Wow, you na alalo mo pa. Ay, Jean Sorin. Ah, oh, tama. <laughs> no. Ay, yeah, yeah. Ito si Jean. So, 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 you, so you did that. Like, is that something that you practice? Or like it just happened? Kasi it, 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 it was so natural eh. Tapos parang gumulong ka and then you just got back up. Tapos wala lang. Parang you didn't even realize that it was a spectacular move. Um... I guess parang hindi. Well, there's certain drills na parang mimix the movement. Parang agano naman, di ba, pag, pag volleyball at din. Like, hindi, hindi siya specific. Like, you're gonna do this, ganyan. Um, there's so, uh, certain drills na parang you get to incorporate it when you're in the actual game. So, eh, yung time na yun. I remember kasi the first ball was super low, eh. And I guess setter instincts na parang you get to set 
better if you're using your hands rather than dig set. So, I guess yun, yung time na yun, parang kaya naman eh. <laughs> kaya ko nito yung sa iyo ba? So, ayun, nap- napilit ko naman. And okay naman. Yeah, but, so... But it looks very natural. Parang hindi naman siya pilit. And it, it came. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, as in like, she was sliding like, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> parang yeah. like you. Ah, oh yeah. Oy, hi you. <laughs> <laughs> so yun, parang hindi hindi ko din inexpect yun. Syempre, la, wala namang expected talaga sa volleyball. Like, minsan mapapaano ka na lang, wow, ginawa mo yun. Parang ganoon. Yeah, that's why we train. Yeah, that's why we train. <laughs> well, uh, uh you actually graduated na from DLSU. If you weren't playing volleyball, what would you be doing? Now? Mhm. Yeah. Um, I'm a business the question na parang minsan I avoid <laughs> kasi like even before sa sa mga interviews like they would ask me parang what do you want to do after this or what do you want to do when you grow up ganyan. Yeah. And I always say, always say parang I just want to be happy. <laughs> I just want to be comfortable. And I guess for now wala para akong masyadong options kasi may covid. Pero, like, I guess I'd love to travel and get to see my sister in Canada kasi she's in Canada now. So, ayun, parang, I guess after the pandemic na lang, I would go, um like, put myself out there and, like, hopefully know what I want to do. So, you're, you're kind of still finding your way. Yeah. How, how old are you anyway? I'm 21, so it's oh, a very tender age. Wow, what? wow, that's, <laughs> that, that, no, don't, no worries, no, no worries. You have the rest of your no life. No rush. Ahead. You have the rest of your life ahead of you. Graduated from Ateneo, like 24 na ata ako. <laughs> ano na graduated? So I'm taking my masters now, so I'm still not ah, done. Technically. Okay. Well, what, what, what course did you complete before the masters? Behavioral sciences. Behavioral sciences. I'm and then now. Behavioral sciences also. Okay. So wala ka, so wala ka talagang like childhood dream and stuff. Na, para I would always say to people na hindi ako like what's this? I'm ambitious. <laughs> like yung alam mo yung mga parang they would say na oh I want to be a doctor, I want to be uh, this. Uh, I'm not like that. I mean, I would that I would say like chef ganun. They're like <laughs> want to be, you know, happy and live comfortably, yeah. First place you would travel to after this pandemic? You said you like to travel. Um, I would like to go to Sicily, Italy. Mm. Pero, uh, okay na ba yung COVID? <laughs> no. <laughs> Parang dun, <laughs> Europe ata yung pinakamalala. Eh. Oo oh, nga eh. Kaya nga eh, sabi ko, ano ba yan? <laughs> But yeah, yung sa Aquaman... Diba? And uh, ah, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Godfather, yeah. I really want. To mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I mean, it's it's so fresh, Michelle. Like the news about the UAAP. Like I mean, you're directly affected by this. Yeah. But like, to what's your message to all the fans who you know? I mean, imagine you guys feel a certain way. Imagine the fans who are who've been waiting, who've been dying to see you guys. Now, now, now the fans are robbed of of two UAP seasons. Like, yeah. what, what's your message to them to, you know, not lose hope and just stay positive for the future that one day sports will come back? Yeah, and it's not impossible naman na it won't come back. I think we just have to to um, prioritize what we need to prioritize, which is our safety. And ayun, parang everything will go into its place naman sooner or later. So I guess we just have to be patient and I guess yun nga, mas, mas ma, ano eh, mas ma, to feed yung fire na parang, yes, like, we want to see the, ano na, parang they, they get more excited, syempre, in the upcoming season. So, yeah. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule <laughs> to, to be on the show. We're so happy to hear more about your story, your volleyball journey. And I know, I know the The fans are very happy as well to hear from you. And Great. they're looking forward to seeing you play again. And the story is, you know, 21 years old. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is just like, like the first couple of chapters of your story. Marami ka tayong abangan. So, yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for 
joining me and Dan for on volleyball DNA. Thank you so much and Thank take you. care. And um, wherever you go in the future, I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Thank you. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.